of, of what we've got going on. I had the agenda up there a few moments ago. Uh, we're going to talk about the application things and so forth. Um, and then we're going to turn it over to our arts and sciences dean, uh, um, director uh, Dr. Joseph Walwick, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, what he's got going on, show some videos. Um, what we're encouraging folks to do, uh, if you have any questions along the way, please, please go on that Q&A at the bottom and just ask your questions. We've got folks standing by um, to uh, answer those questions in that Q&A, so we'll be happy to help you anywhere along the way. Um, so I think we're about ready to get started here. Let's take a, a look at uh, everything and we'll, we'll get started. All right, so as I said, this is my agenda, all the things we're trying to get done. Uh, first of all, just so that you know, Parkland College, a um, little fa few facts about Parkland College in general. Uh, we are the district 505 Community College. I'm going to show that what that district means a little bit later in the presentation. Our faculty to student ratio is 1 to 18. And what that means for you is that means your instructors are going to know you, you're going to know your classmates, and you're going to get a lot of individualized attention. It's one of the great things about a community college. Uh, we're really proud of our, how much our faculty and our students work together. Uh, lots of classrooms and specialized labs, Wi-Fi, of course, throughout campus, radio and, uh, stations and TV stations. In fact, um, as, as you probably saw on the, the chat there, um, what you were listening to was actually um, Perimeter Roads, which is our student uh, production of folks that actually they cut CDs and they promote uh, different folks uh, throughout the year. So that's cool and cool that we could share that music with you. Um, 315 seat theater, community theater that does shows throughout the year. Um, like I said, the recording studio, the, the planetarium, if you've never had a chance to sit back and look at the night sky, it's a great, a great way to do that. Um, and it's used for classes, but it's also used on Friday and Saturday night when we're not in the COVID time. And um, so it's a, it's a great venue. Art gallery that shows maybe seven or eight shows a year, both regional and national artists. Uh, fitness center where you can not only work out uh, on the equipment, but also take classes. So make sure that 15, that freshman 15 doesn't appear so fast. The athletics uh, programs that we have are awesome. Uh, we're nationally ranked all the time. So if the, this is something you're interested in, please go to parkland.edu backslash athletics, and you can see more about that. Um, definitely want to get involved with that. 40 plus student organizations, so all sorts of things to get involved in from uh, the newspaper to uh, all sorts of clubs and organizations. So uh, that's something that, that definitely makes college uh, more memorable. Greenhouse, uh, Pathway to Illinois, I'm going to tell you more about that program in a little bit. So let's go on and let's talk a little bit. I'm going to kind of go quickly through some of this. These are the steps to applying to Parkland. So anyone who wants to be a student here at Parkland needs to follow these steps. They have to apply. So you go to parkland.edu backslash apply and do an application. Um, you're going to decide if you want to be degree seeking or non-degree seeking. In most cases, if you're planning to be a full-time student, be a degree seeking student. Um, tell us what you're interested in doing. And then have your high school send us uh, transcripts. And that will tell us that you're on your way to graduating or you've already graduated. I know many of the folks out there today are graduating probably in the spring or um, for the fall, something like that. So make sure you get to high school to send us transcripts as soon as possible. If you've done college um, somewhere else, make sure those college transcripts come to us as well so we know what you've been doing. And then if you've taken ACT and SAT scores, you can send that to us as well. And oftentimes we can use that for placement. The other thing is financial aid. And I'm hoping everybody that's out there that is interested in coming, like I said, for spring or for fall even, have already done their financial aid. And when I talk about financial aid, I'm talking about the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. This is the government form and it determines uh, what kind of aid you could receive. And first it's gonna look at Pell Grants, which is federal money to see if you qualify for any of those. MAP Grants, which is state money, the same kind of thing. But oftentimes even the scholarships wanna know that you spelled out your financial aid form. So I tell people it's just like doing taxes. Every year around October 1st, go into the FAFSA.gov website and fill out the information they're asking for. If you can get some free money out of it, that's awesome. Um, if not, at least you, you know you've done everything you can um, to, to make sure that you put yourself in the best possible light. The next thing, you've done your application, you've got us transcripts, then we have to assess where you are. We're going to have to try to figure out uh, what's your best placement for English, reading, math, things like that. 
And that's what the assessments do. And it's not necessarily a test. Sometimes we can use your ACT or your SAT scores. Sometimes we can use your high school grade point average. Sometimes we use previous college work. All those things together we can use for assessment. But if we don't have those or if they're not quite the level that we need them at, it's not a problem. We're going to give you placement tests. Right now we're doing it online, so you can even do it from the comfort of your home. What I want to point out to you is how important those assessments are because that determines where you get to start. If your assessments place you at, at above 100 level courses, then you are at college level, okay? But if they place you below 100 level, then you're considered in developmental courses. And it's great. If you need those developmental courses to get a, a strong foundation for the next classes, that's wonderful. We'll be happy to do that. But we want to make sure that you don't um, kind of pass off the assessment. That's not a big deal because they are a big deal. And oftentimes students will say, well, maybe I didn't do my best or maybe I didn't prepare enough. That's fine. You can take the assessments uh, another time. We're not charging anything for retakes at this point. But it's important to try to take them seriously the first time through so you do your very best. The assessments, if you have questions about it, you can always go to parkland.edu backslash assessment and they can tell you more about that. The other thing I wanna bring up here is accessibility services. So at any time during your high school career that you ever had an IEP or you were given accommodations, longer test times, things like that, we need to make sure that we can help you with those same things here at college. But we, but we need you to reach out and let us know that that's something that you're interested in. Um, so if you have an IEP, get it to the accessibility services folks. That can make a difference of how your placement tests are done. Uh, so you can get accommodations for your placement testing. And of course, all the time that you're here, you, and, you can work with your instructor so that you can get the, the right accommodation. So I tell students, anybody who has ever had um, those kind of accommodations in the past, even if you choose not to use them, it's important that you set them everything up so that you could use it if you needed it. So again, you can go to accessibility services at parkland.edu and they can help you with that process. I want to spend a little bit more time here today talking about the Pathway to Illinois. The Pathway to Illinois is a very specific program. Now we do transfers to all sorts of different institutions, but the Pathway to Illinois is a specific program. So when you hear us talk about Pathway, that's what we're talking about probably. It's a dual enrollment program. That means you're taking your general education courses at Parkland, but you're also taking a class every semester at the University of Illinois for the first two years. So that means you need to be a degree seeking student at Parkland. You need to do all those steps that I told you about already. And then you'll do another application to uh, the pathway program and specifically on the University of Illinois website starting March 5th. So you'll go into your MyLine account or create a MyLine account, and you'll see a new application pathway to Illinois, March 5th through April 15th. That's the only time that it's open, all right? Almost all the colleges at the, at the U of I are involved in this, except the College of Business. They don't participate in pathway. The other thing is you have to have graduated from an Illinois high school or earned an Illinois GED to qualify for it. They're not using uh, ACT or SAT this year. They're not requiring this year. Uh, probably in the future they will, but um, they aren't this year. Uh, and then you're going to complete the same coursework that you would be doing for transfers. And then you can see all of that in our transfer handbook. But you're going to have, you're, you're going to learn all about that when you talk to your different advisors. And that's what one of the big advantages of the pathway program are. Uh, it's a guaranteed admission to the U of I in the program that you've chosen. So I know there's folks out there that may be interested in psychology, for instance. And so they'll be a degree-seeking student in the Associate Arts for us. And then uh, they're going to transfer to the puzzle with liberal arts and sciences to, to go after psychology at the University of Illinois. And they're going to be helped every step along the way to make sure they're taking the right courses and everything transfers um, and so forth. So you'll have a specific advisor here at Parkland. And then you'll also have an advisor at the U of I that you're going to meet with every semester to make sure that you're on track. You have the ability to participate in the clubs and organizations at both institutions. You're going to pay the Parkland rate uh, for the U of I courses, so that's a big deal. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about tuition as we get further in the program. You can live in the U of I dorms, uh, just like a regular U of I student, as long as they're maintaining the fees. Uh, so those are a lot of the big advantages. I wanted to point out there's some extra steps for the College of Engineering. This is really important to know. The, the College of Engineering is requiring an extra step that you must have an Alex math placement uh, in place at Parkland College before April 1st. Um, they're going to use that placement to determine whether you can get into the program. Now, that's not the only thing they're looking at. They're going to look at the grades and things like that, but that is a central part. 
They're going to ask us what your score was. Uh, we're going to pass that on, and that's how they're going to make some of those decisions. And I've got really specific here. If you get a 76 or better, you're in calculus one for us. Um, and that's what they're that's what they're looking for. Um, a 61 would get you into trig, but that would require that you would have to take trig over the summer. So I'm, I know I'm kind of going in the weeds here, but that's a super important uh, bit of information for the College of Engineering folks. Also, the engineering uh, it works as a cohort. So everybody takes the same classes. So even if you've taken AP classes or previous college work or SATs or anything like that, um, they're going to have everybody take the same courses if you're going through um, the engineering pathway. So I want to make sure everybody's aware of that. So let's talk a little bit about that tuition stuff that I was talking about. Uh, this map here shows you what our district uh, covers. So everything inside the green is considered Parkland District. Uh, notice we go all from the north, Piper City, all the way down to Arcola and then Leroy to Homer. Uh, covers a whole lot of ground. Um, and then anybody in this area that's graduating from these high schools is going to be considered an in-district student at 171 per credit hour. Um, so that means a typical student is going to take maybe four or five classes, somewhere around 15 credit hours. That would be about 2,500 a semester. Uh, and if they're a U of I student, uh, I'm sorry, if they're a pathway student and also doing the same thing, that, that $2,500 would be covered in that, all of that as well, okay? If they're outside of our, of our district, uh, but still inside the state, they're considered an out of district student and all of a sudden the tuition is now 386 a credit hour. This is a big deal. So instead of 2,500 a semester, you're now looking at closer to 5,500 a semester. Again, if you're in pathway, it would still cover that. So obviously it's still cheaper than the U of I's web of um, tuition, but it's something to keep in mind. And it's important to know that just moving into our district isn't sufficient to change your, your tuition, okay? It's called changing your residency, and there's a lot of more steps to it. If this is something you want to do, please, please come talk to admissions uh, as early as you can, and we'll tell you what the steps are to do that. That's really important to know. Um, and out of state, obviously, it's 531 a credit hour. Um, so I wanted to make sure you're kind of aware of some of those things. Well, there are things called the career agreements, but we're talking today about transfer programs, and normally uh, the career agreements only apply to the applied science programs, things like aviation or vet tech or diesel, not things that are particularly uh, geared to, to transfers. So I wanted to look just so you know kind of the things we might be talking about down the road. The other thing Parkland is really known for is our support services. We have a wonderful facility called the Center for Academic Success, or D120 where we kind of put all of our helping functions together, peer tutoring, uh, English writing lab, math help. Uh, now, right now we're doing a lot of that virtually, but we're still providing a ton of services so that students can get help all along the way. So it's not just a matter of having to track down their, their faculty, which are excellent and they're, they're available all the time, but there's even more places that can get that help. Um, housing and transportation, that's maybe something that you haven't thought about when you're looking at, at colleges. Parkland itself does not have any housing. So I made sure I wanted to give you our housing link here. This is just talking about some of the different places in the community. There are a ton of apartments in this town and many of them are student oriented. So there may be, oh, four people sharing a common kitchen, living room, dining setup, other than everybody has their own lease with management. So those can run anywhere from 400 to $1,000. So it's a huge range. I encourage anybody that's looking at housing before you sign anything, please, Come down, check them out, make sure everything is what you expect. The other thing to bring up is our, our bus system. The Champaign-Urbana MTD is awesome. Uh, for $84 a year, it will take you all around the town when as much as you need to. Gosh, there must be three, four, five different buses that come here all, um, uh, every hour, and they take you all over campus. So it's definitely possible to be a Parkland student and, and just using the buses, not a problem at all. Um, Otherwise, um, if you just want to use it once in a while, it's a dollar each way. But also, our parking here is free, so you know uh, that's that's uh, definitely you can you can do you can you can drive as well. Uh, as I want to close up here, I wanted to bring up some important dates. Our spring registration just opened this week, so if anybody's out there thinking about coming to spring, uh, please make sure um, we come talk to us as soon as possible. Our spring classes will start January 11. There is going to be a pathway open house coming up on February 23rd. It's not posted yet on our visit us page, but that's going to be an opportunity to kind of hear from the other side of the house. So the folks from the U of I will give presentations and you can hear what they're saying about the program. Pathway out Illinois application will open up March 5th and then fall enrollment will open up April 5th. And I noticed I've given you our, our email there and uh, 
our phone number so that you have any questions along the way. Uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to share those and answer those for you. Um, at this point, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Walwick. Uh, he is going to take over from here for a bit um, and we'll just go from there. Thank you, Mary Kay. And, and thank everybody for joining us. My name is Joe Walwick and I'm the Dean of Arts and Sciences here at Parkland. And what that means is I uh, get to oversee some really wonderful uh, departments, including uh, fine and applied arts, humanities, math, natural sciences, and, and social sciences. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, about each of those um, and then uh, have a little video uh, presentation on some of the things that are happening in those, those departments. So uh, to start with, uh, Fine and Applied Arts uh, is a department where you can take courses in the, uh, uh, in, in the arts. We have some wonderful uh, uh, studios to use, uh, courses in visual design or uh, graphic design, theater courses. We have a wonderful theater, uh, uh, communications courses. Uh, I think as Mary Kay uh, pointed out earlier, the music that we listened to at the beginning of this was all written, uh, performed, produced, mixed, uh, recorded in-house here at Parkland at our Perimeter Road uh, uh, recording studio, a record label. Um, a lot of exciting things happen in the fine and applied arts. The humanities department is where you would take courses in things like literature, philosophy, foreign languages, uh, religion. Um, math is where you would uh, not surprisingly take a lot of math classes. Um, but math is a stepping stone to a whole lot of different fields uh, that require uh, uh, working knowledge of, of different levels of mathematics. Uh, in natural sciences, uh, you take courses in things like biology, chemistry, uh, geology. We also have uh, just a state-of-the-art planetarium uh, for students taking courses in astronomy. A lot of really wonderful things happen um, in these courses. Uh, the, the level of, of inquiry, um, the, the type of research that's happening, uh, is, is really just top shelf. And we're very proud of what goes on there. Um, the social sciences covers a lot of different disciplines, uh, things like sociology, psychology, anthropology, uh, history, economics, education, criminal justice, and social work uh, are all in, those, uh, in, in that single department. Now, some of these courses probably sound like uh, things that you're interested in doing as a career. And so some of these things you would take and they'd be your first step on a career path. And others are going to be part of a broader picture of your education. Uh, and, and both of those things are great. Uh, in some ways, they both do the same thing. Uh, what we really strive for here is, is when, when you leave Parkland, uh, when you've taken these courses in these different areas, is that you've learned different ways of, of encountering information that you're not familiar with. Uh, learning how to understand it, how to analyze it, how to apply it, uh, and how to communicate that to somebody else. And while you may not think always that some of these courses are applicable to uh, what you think you want to do for your career, those skills of understanding and uh, analyzing and applying and communicating information those are really the transferable skills that are going to last you a lifetime. And no matter what you do, uh, you will find yourself uh, leaning on these, on these skills uh, throughout your lifetime. And as we know, the world changes quickly and uh, people change careers you know, four or five, six times throughout their working life. And so whatever you, you begin your studies uh, thinking you might be doing forever, there's a good chance that's going to change. What won't change is your ability to think. And uh, we, we like to uh, consider these courses and these programs where you really get to hone those thinking skills to begin to think uh, like a chemist sometimes, or like a mathematician, or like a poet. Uh, all a little bit different, all very valuable. And so these are the things that we, we, uh, we like to emphasize. So uh, I'm going to introduce the department chairs here in a few minutes and then take some questions. But before we do that, we have a little video that we'd like you to see, uh, highlighting some of the work that's happening in our departments.
Welcome to the Department of Social Sciences at Parkland. Social scientists study people, our origins, our social behaviors, and how we humans engage with the environment. If you are a people person and want to know why we're arguably the most successful species on the planet, our classes are for you. In social sciences, psychology and education courses explore the complexity of the human mind and human emotions. And sociology courses study community institutions and social interactions. Political science, criminal justice, and economics classes learn about our society structures. And students engage with the past, material culture, and how humans occupy the landscape in anthropology, geography, and history. Our classes are taught by experts in each discipline who are also committed educators and excel at teaching. Because of this, we emphasize learning by doing. If you take our courses, you might find yourself making classroom observations for an education class, or shadowing someone in the local police department for criminal justice, or being the jury in a mock trial for a political science course, or helping organize a speaker series where you meet social scientists from across the state who share their professional experience with our campus. Our students also venture outside the traditional classroom. Through an ongoing collaboration with the Illinois State Archaeological Survey, students every summer participate in an archaeological excavation within commuting distance of Champaign-Urbana. Anthropology students also present in the fall and spring semesters on social research about the Parkland community at Undergraduate Research Week at the University of Illinois. Our social justice club members volunteer and educate everyone at Parkland on diversity issues. In social science, we want our students to learn exciting ideas, but also encourage them to become producers of their own knowledge. Our instructors mentor and train students one-on-one -on -one in a variety of quantitative and qualitative methods that prepare them to successfully transfer to four-year schools, as well as to master the soft skills that employers look for in our rapidly changing and globalized world. We look forward to sharing the exciting world of the social sciences with you. My name is Matthew Hurt, and I'm the chair of the Humanities Department here at Parkland College. The courses you take from the Humanities Department, like English Composition, Literature, Philosophy, Foreign Languages, Creative Writing, and a variety of World Cultures courses, help you develop core academic and professional skills that you'll need to succeed in future academic pursuits and in a wide range of professions and careers. These skills are reading, writing, and critical thinking. Through their studies in the humanities, students acquire not only these basic and core academic skills, but they also gain a curiosity about the world and other cultures. They develop habits of mind that allow them to see the world from multiple perspectives and critically evaluate information. And they develop, perhaps most importantly in my mind, the intellectual flexibility and adaptability to adjust to new circumstances, think creatively, and solve new problems. After all, with the pace of technological change increasing every day, it's a safe assumption that by the time you graduate, you will be working with technology, machines, tools, processes, software, hardware that don't currently exist. Now here's a question. What do all of these things have in common? They are all technologies for preserving, distributing, and accessing words, ideas, and stories. Over the centuries, the technologies that humans have developed for this purpose have changed dramatically, and many of us now carry enough information in our pockets to fill all of the world's libraries and then some, all of it more or less immediately available to us with a swipe or click on a screen. But beneath all the bells and whistles of the latest gizmos, not much has really changed. People have stories to tell, ideas they want to express, 
and other people want to read, hear, or watch those stories and understand and evaluate those ideas. Again, the tools change, but not the needs they serve. What hasn't changed is the nature of what is encoded within these technologies. The words, ideas, stories, sounds, and images that reflect our most basic values, and thus what it means to be human. The skills and characteristics of a well-rounded individual fostered through the liberal arts and the humanities are not only extremely valuable to employers, but they are central to the healthy functioning of our democracy as well. The humanities, as a central component of a true liberal arts education, provides an excellent and permanent foundation for all of your future professional, academic, and personal goals. Welcome to the Natural Sciences Department at Parkland College, where we teach students about the findings and practice of science. We're a diverse department striving to meet the needs and fan the flames of curiosity in our students. Our life science classes, such as principles of biology, evolutionary biology, environmental biology and sustainability, and microbiology explore the science of living things. Similarly, our physical science courses in chemistry, physics, astronomy, weather, and geology investigate the universe of inanimate natural objects and phenomena. Our classes and labs have smaller student numbers to allow for highly individualized instruction by the professor, and our lab spaces are well equipped and designed specifically with student learning in mind. Students benefit from a hands-on approach with the use of our excellent facilities. Anatomy and physiology students study the human body in our cadaver labs and with the use of state-of-the-art equipment like the anatomage table. Earth science students use the augmented reality sand table, stream table, and the Dean Timmy Memorial Earth Sciences Courtyard Laboratory to better understand geology and weather. Kinesiology students prepare for transfer and personal fitness trainer certification while using our fitness center as their lab. Forensic science classes gain experience in the science of crime investigation and the effects of trauma and death on the body by processing a mock crime scene and the use of the osteology lab. Natural Sciences is home to the William M. Starkle Planetarium, the second largest planetarium in Illinois. Our World of Science lecture series provides a monthly forum in which local scientists discuss their specialties, and Parkland students in astronomy and other classes regularly use the planetarium as a laboratory space. And we don't limit learning to the classroom. Earth science classes, like weather and geology, plan outings to Finney Branch and Starved Rock State Park. Furthermore, the Parkland Science Club provides opportunities for students to go to other campuses, to hear other speakers, and take field trips to a variety of locations. So whether you're interested in the life sciences or the physical sciences, we are here ready to help you succeed. Welcome. Fine and Applied Arts is the place to explore your passion, find a direction, and prepare for the future. FAA programs include art and design, communication, music, theater arts, and visual communication design. These programs provide hands-on experiences designed to help you transfer or start your career. Here is a brief look at what FAA has to offer. The Art and Design and Visual Communication Design classes at Parkland provide students with a wide variety of opportunities. Besides core foundation courses that will transfer to four-year institutions, students may also take Art and Design courses to fulfill general education requirements or for personal interest. In addition to the core courses of Drawing and Design, students may also take studio classes in Jewelry and Metals, Ceramics, Sculpture, Graphic Design, painting and photography. Students taking these courses have the opportunity to submit their work to juried student exhibitions in Parkland's Donna Highland Gertz Gallery. These exhibitions are part of the yearly gallery schedule and provide professional experiences that allow our community to see the talents and efforts of these emerging artists. 
Communication is one of the most important professional skills employers are looking for. It's a popular and versatile field and prepares students for a variety of careers, including media, marketing, public relations, or customer service. Communication students benefit from hands-on experiences in student-staffed activities, such as our strategic communication firm, AMP, Applied Media Promotions, our record label, Perimeter Road Sound Recordings, Parkland's radio station, WPCD, or participation in our annual David Jones Speech Contest. Theater arts classes provide experience in acting, set design and construction, lighting, props, costumes, and stage management. Students learn skills in analysis, problem solving, performance, and creative improvisation that can be used in just about any career field. A theater degree prepares students for a variety of onstage and backstage careers in theater or entertainment venues, such as producer, director, stage manager, actor, technical director, or stage hand. Skills learned in technical theater are used in themed restaurants, vacation resorts, and in the design, fabrication, and installation of exhibits. Parkland's music program gives you the opportunity to work with highly trained professional musicians who are excellent teachers, published authors, and composers. You will receive individualized attention in small classes and will build your musical skills through private lessons and participation in our ensembles. You'll learn organization, collaboration, and time management while practicing to master musical skills and participate as a member of a musical ensemble. The courses you take will provide the foundation you need to audition and successfully transfer to a four-year college or university. Completing a degree in music can prepare you for careers in a variety of fields, such as performance, education, arts administration, music business, community arts management, and music therapy. Wow, I was watching that and I was thinking about all the things I forgot to mention in my brief overview. And uh, I think things like our, our fabulous music uh, program, uh, our political science courses, physics, kinesiology, uh, our uh, outstanding art gallery, the, the radio station I listen to every day. Uh, and it's not that I was trying to short anybody, it's just there's so much going on. It is sometimes hard to remember. But also there's so much going on that it's a, it's a good jumping off point to say, if you wanna do something, Parkland's a great place to start. There is so much happening here that it's even hard for me to keep up with it. It's, it's my job to do that. So uh, let's talk for a few minutes with our department chairs. Uh, we have some questions uh, for them. So I'm gonna uh, call on, on some people and if they could, uh, turn the camera on and, and unmute their microphone. I think we'll start in fine and applied arts with uh, Julie Wisher. Hi, Julie. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you today? I'm good. Uh, so we get an opportunity here to, uh, I'm gonna ask some, some questions, but uh, you get to, to brag a little bit more about all of your areas uh, in, in ways in much more depth than I, than I possibly could. Um, so I think one of the questions that comes up with the arts um, in general is, are there really jobs there? That's a great question. And the answer to that is yes, there is. There, there are jobs out there and uh, in art and in music and in theater, uh, in our visual communication design, we have uh, in, in many of our fields, both uh, degrees that will prepare you to enter the workforce right away, and uh, degrees that will help you transfer to a four-year uh, college or university. So, uh, and, and the foundation skills that you learn will, whether you go on to do something in the arts or not, really do give you a great foundation that you can use no matter what kind of career you are going into. So, that's great. Are there, uh, there scholarship opportunities for, for students wanting to go into the arts? 
Yes, actually, if anyone is interested, we do have music scholarships, we have theater scholarships, we also have what we call our fine and applied arts activity scholarships. So even if you're interested in a different field, but you would like to uh, work and uh, learn and do some actual activities in fine and applied arts, you can apply for the scholarship. These scholarships pay 50% tuition and fees for up to two years, including summers. And uh, you just have to be a full-time student, maintain a particular grade point average. Uh, and these, uh, the, the activity scholarships are great if, if you wanna help work in the, uh, the art gallery or you want to um, work in the radio station or you have, you wanna help in the uh, art studios. There's, there's a lot of different things that you could do, um, even whether or not you're a, a fine and applied arts program student. So even if you're not one of those, uh, you know, fine and applied arts students, you could be in a theater production or one of the musical ensembles or anything like that. That's open to everybody, right? That is correct. Um, the, the, what is wonderful about our theater and our music is that you are acting you are working in the theater alongside community members and um, actors and producers in their own right. So they do this in the community. Same thing with our musicians as well. You're working, you're, you're playing music alongside or with those folks who've been playing for years and are in our ensembles. And that's, that's uh, some of the great opportunities that you have. So whether whether or not you're a, a music major, you can still sing in our choir. You could still participate in our guitar class and ensemble. There are a lot of things that you can do. If you, whether or not you are a theater uh, student, you can still volunteer to help with theater productions, to, to act in audition on stage. You can do a lot of those things. Oh, thank you, that's great. Uh, I think I'd like to talk about math now. Doesn't everybody want to talk about math? Brian Merce is the chair of our math department. Brian, if you could come on in. There you are. Hey, Joe. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, okay. So I hear that you have to take a placement test to get into a math course or get into math courses. Could you tell us about that process and, and why we have to do that? Sure thing. Um, so we have a placement test here at Parkland um, that um, is, is not really uh, something to be thought of as a one and done test. It, it's more of a, a, a process uh, where um, we want students to be prepared and confident uh, going into the classes that they take here and to help make sure that happens um, we require all students to have um, a valid uh, current placement score. And um, the way that test works is um, they're able to take the test as many times as they want, first of all. Um, when they take the test the first time, um, they're given a score, which says um, this is the course that you would place into. Um, and what I tell students is if that score uh, meets your needs, uh, gets you into the class that you want, then that's great. Um, if that score isn't what you want, then you're immediately given the opportunity to, to go into uh, what amounts to your own personalized online review course. Um, and you're welcome to use our tutoring program to help uh, as you work through that review uh, material. Um, but you can review as much as you want and take the test again to improve your score. But again, ultimately, we want students to be um, prepared uh, with prerequisite skills and confident um, as they enter the courses that, um, that they're about to take. So those placement tests are really just making sure you're, you're in a course that's at the level you, you need to be at, right? Math is, is one of those things that you don't want to um, dive in over your head because it can feel overwhelming very quickly and we don't want students to, um, to, we want them to be challenged, but we don't want them to be so, um, so challenged that they're, that they're frustrated. And so, um, requiring this placement test uh, is our way of making sure that that, that doesn't happen. 
So you're suggesting that if I were to be put or to take a calculus class, it might be a bad idea for me. Um, well, you'd have to take the placement test and see what your score is. It might be a bad idea or it might not. I'm sure it would be a bad idea. <laughs> But, but there would be courses for my level of mathematical skills, right? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> so why, why, I mean, this is more of a philosophical kind of question. Why should anybody, why should everybody take a math class? What, what good does it do if you want to be a major in something that you don't think is related to math at all? Sure, I get asked that question a lot, um, you know, so sometimes I, I take the, the easy way out and say, that's not my fault, blame, blame the program that you selected. Uh, but in general, uh, uh, I, what I talk to students about is that, um, you know, no matter what uh, degree you're pursuing, um, you want to be uh, as well-rounded as possible. I think that's, that's part of, of going to college. Um, that's why I took history and art and several other things uh, as, as I went through my, my degree program. Um, and, you know, we want students as they read the news, um, as they watch the news, as they click through the news, we want them to be critical of what they read and, and um, uh, information literacy, data literacy, um, just, just being comfortable and confident um, as they make life decisions about buying and renting and, um, you know, investing and whatever other sorts of, of financial decisions um, uh, we have to make as we go through life, those all uh, certainly relate to math one way or another. And so uh, really it, it's about being well-rounded and um, um, having some, some basic exposure um, to, to math is, is good for all of us. And I think we all have heard about, we know there are some direct correlations between things like mathematics and music. Um, Certainly. But also my own field is, uh, is in history and um, uh, working uh, knowledge of, of mathematics is, is really becoming very important in uh, historical inquiry and in, in many other areas as well that you may not naturally uh, suspect that it is there. Yep. So it does become very important to, uh, to have at least those basic skills. Thank you. Sure. Dr. Matt Hurt is the chair of our humanities department. Hi, Matt. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening, whatever the case may be. Uh, okay. Here's, here's the million dollar question. My daughter wants to be an English major. Is this a good okay. idea? No, yeah, it's an ex excellent idea. Yes. Why? Uh, Tell me why. Well, uh, you know, there's not, there, there's English professor. Okay. I want to be an English professor. Uh, despite uh, popular belief, the world does need more English professors. Uh, but the, 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 the major of English is, as, as you were saying earlier, is applicable to a wide variety of professions, uh, from law to business, um, uh, public relations, advertising. Uh, a degree in English really provides you with a very strong foundation in three key areas. One is writing, another is reading, and another is critical thinking. Uh, so taking complex ideas, uh, being able to, to break them down and communicate them to another person, to provide research and information that has been vetted by you, <laughs> uh, that, that you have evaluated and thought carefully about, and that you are able to present in an equitable way to convince somebody of your point of view. That's, that's an invaluable skill that I know um, uh, for years and years, employers have said, these are, these are the kinds of skills that we want and that we need, but that we aren't seeing enough of. Uh, from, from graduates. So we really want to develop those critical thinking, reading, and writing skills in our students. It's, it's also not just a, a job issue uh, because uh, an English major uh, uh, benefits a person on the personal level, the professional level, and, and sort of on a philosophical level. On a personal level, 
Um, we, we encounter stories, we're able to express ourselves, we're able to analyze and think through other people's stories, how they might relate to our lives, what we may learn from other people's experiences and stories. Professionally, as I just mentioned, um, clear communication, to be able, the, the ability to break down complex ideas um, and, and explain them clearly to another person is an absolutely crucial role in many, many of the professions. And it's also uh, goes to the philosophical. It makes us better people to be able to read um, thoughtfully, uh, to read widely, to develop a curious habit of mind. Um, you, you were talking about the interesting connections between music and mathematics and history. Those are the kinds of, those are the kinds of connections that humanities courses provide you the tools with to be able to make those connections between dis, different, different disciplines um, through, the, through the careful and close analysis of texts, of written material, a visual material, because it's not all just written works. It's not just novels and poems that we're reading. We're reading films. We're reading YouTube videos. We're reading um, uh, uh, lots of graphic imagery. But all of that is designed to take a complex idea, reduce it down as clearly as possible, and communicate it to as clearly as possible to as many people. So. I mean, I think that the reason to be an English major is it benefits you personally, benefits you professionally, and it benefits you philosophically. Great, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, and there are a couple of things. I really liked your definition of critical thinking. We use that term a lot. We don't always define it very well. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was really nice. Uh, and I like the, uh, the, the two-pronged thing there. One is uh, you, you take these courses and well, it's, it's, it's more fun. Life is more fun when you're better informed. Life, mm -hmm. Life's more fun when you're smarter than your friends. <laughs> That's right. And you have stuff to talk about at cocktail parties, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but there, I mean, there really is a, a practical side of this and that you, know, that you took a philosophy course or a literature course in college. That may not be the thing that gets you a job, <clears throat> but it's probably going to be the thing that helps get you a promotion. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, and, 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 and makes you succeed at that job and yeah. uh, allows you to, uh, to move forward because you're not just reading philosophical texts, but you're also reading the values, reading of, of all of the people around you and of the culture of your organization. Um, a, a, a basis in the liberal arts, and this, is, this does not just include philosophy and literature, but also includes natural sciences, math, communications, uh, human, uh, you know, social sciences, all of these things come together in a package to make you a well-rounded person that can encounter a new situation and be able to read it and understand it, make a decision about it and act on it. It's, 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 a, it's a, a liberal arts education provides you with the flexibility and adaptability to adjust to new situations. And I think we all know that new situations are the new normal. Well, thank you. And I, you know, uh, uh, directly to your point about uh, uh, the idea of being well-rounded, uh, you know, we need to, to move now to, to one of the most uh, well-rounded people I know, which is Dr. Seekin, uh, who's our chair of uh, natural sciences, uh, but uh, holds his own in all kinds of conversations about literature and everything else. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, Joe. I guess um, uh, I, I certainly do love reading as much as I can. And I, I love you know, all the things Matt and Julie uh, have been talking about in terms of making connections across a broad spectrum of, of, of human endeavor. Uh, and, and one of the biggest things that, that human endeavors have gotten us that maybe separates us from the rest of the living world is is this endeavor that I, I chose to spend my life looking at closely, the natural sciences. You know, this, this process of science that I talked about in the video um, is, is crucial and it takes a lot of the philosophy uh, and a critical thinking and all that stuff and pairs it down to the absolute bare, you know, the bare bones, the real, where the rubber meets the road. Um, and, and you've got to really apply that in a very uh, rigorous uh, way to figure out 
new things about how how the world works, about how the universe works. And you know, um, uh, Matt's talking about how English makes you you know gives you joy, gives you contentment in in understanding yourself and those around you. And that's absolutely true. But I, I for myself, uh, understanding more about how the universe works and more clearly about how the universe works and our place in it, I also find deep uh, uh, joy and and you know a sense of 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 awe at at understanding that better. And so the, you know applying this process of of figuring out how the world works uh, is something that that has given me. Uh, great satisfaction in my life and I, I'm really glad that I chose to go down this road. And, I think that's and really what, what ties us all together here is that, that sense of wonder and, and curiosity. Uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, we all, we all went to college uh, and we all took science courses, but they're not the same as they used to be. So hmm. the way we deliver our science courses has changed a lot. So I, I know here now we have courses that we call hybrid, we have online courses. How do, how do we do the kind of science courses and labs in uh, hybrid or online formats? Well, frankly, it, it is a challenge. Um, and it's a challenge that, that, that some of our um, just astounding faculty here have taken on and, and they're really finding new and creative ways of, of delivering uh, many of these learning experiences uh, uh, for folks to do at home uh, that we've done, you know, we we've, we've, we've for so long, used uh, our, our labs and, and our labs are great. And frankly, if we had our druthers, we'd still be mostly uh, in our labs doing the you know, hands-on stuff and learning to use the, the instrumentation. And we can maybe demonstrate some of our points more clearly with stuff we can do doing the labs. And, and that's what a lot of our hybrid courses are done. We will uh, simply have uh, students come in to do the lab portion of our courses and we'll use that face-to-face -face time in our hybrid sections and then, you know, spend most of our time online doing uh, lecture content and either synchronous or asynchronous. Um, but uh, it's not always possible. And frankly, for the last several years, even before the pandemic, we've been uh, uh, offering more and more course of, of our science, even our lab-based science courses online. And one of the ways we've gone about accomplishing this is by simply having you purchase, having students purchase a, a lab kit with some basics in it, um, uh, you know, beakers and maybe a, a balance and um, uh, glassware and in chemist, in the case of chemistry, some molecular models that they could be working with to figure out the structures of, of molecules and so forth. And, and using that, and then maybe asking you to, in addition to that, take some stuff from your kitchen or maybe go to the grocery store and pick up a, a, a bottle of ethanol. Ethanol is getting harder to, to buy at the grocery store these days, if you haven't noticed. Um, but, but, you know, uh, uh, fingernail polish is a great chemical to work with. Uh, fingernail polish remover uh, is a great, uh, you, know, it, 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 you know, so we find creative ways for you to be able to do a lot of these uh, experiments that we're designing now to show the same principles we've been trying to demonstrate in our, in our lab spaces using things you can have at home. And, and uh, it's true that some of the results aren't always as pristine as we would like, and maybe it takes a little more uh, work um, uh, uh, on your part to set this up and you know, then you take pictures of your results and analyze those results. But a lot of the process, again, is still the same. Um, you know, a scientist is just somebody who does in a very rigorous and, and, and formal way, Stuff that a lot of us do all the time every day just think critically about how the world works and i'm going to try this and see what happens and use that information to determine decisions i make in the future and 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 that's a lot of that's the foundation of science so there's no science doesn't only happen in the laboratory that being said we sure do you know make use of the lab and the equip the labs and the equipment we do have so, so i know if a student wants to major uh you know, get a bachelor's degree in biology or chemistry or physics, that we have uh, a clear pathways of the courses they should take. Um, and we talk a lot about students who are going to transfer uh, from, from these departments and go on and get a bachelor's degree. Um, and, but I want to take just a little moment to brag just a little bit about our natural sciences department and our outstanding faculty. Um, while we think about students starting here and going somewhere else, we have an awful lot of students who go to a large university across town, but then come to us to take their physics and their biology and their chemistry classes. Why do you think that is? 
Hmm. Um, well, uh, as you said, um, it really boils down to we just have amazingly uh, uh, competent and, and creative faculty and we teach these classes and the ideas are the same, whether you're learning them at an R1 or, or you know, across town or, or with us and, and with a smaller class size and our extremely talented faculty are really good at helping students learn this material. Um, uh, you know, again, it does come down to the students needing to do the work and they're the ones doing the learning. But gosh, if you're making that effort, we can do a lot to help you learn these ideas. And, and this is the, the, the profession we've chosen, right? Um, uh, you know, highly credentialed scientists who've decided that what they want to spend their career doing is helping students learn this challenging material because it is so rewarding when you do understand and make the connection. And so um, uh, we're just so, so happy to be a part of that endeavor and would love to help anybody who wants to follow these careers or just take a science because it's got a, it's got to fulfill a requirement for other careers as well. Um, we've got plenty of those classes also. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, you. And uh, I don't want to say I saved the best for last, but I did save my old department for last. And uh, Dr. Scarborough, uh, Isabel Scarborough is, is here to talk a little bit about social sciences. And I, I think the first thing I want to ask is, what does that mean? What are the social sciences? Well, the social sciences, I think it echoes quite a bit of what we've been talking about here with the other chairs. Uh, what the social sciences do is that we tend to look at problems or issues that people have from different lenses. So uh, students in some of my classes were talking about how their classes now are talking to each other. Uh, we're looking at issues of mental health in different cultures in our anthropology courses. And they were saying how they're seeing the same issues, for instance, in a psychology course or in sociology and political science, they're learning about how uh, institutions help with mental health and help people out. And the same goes for economics. And uh, you could say the same for education. How are teachers being involved in this and how are they being helped with this? And how are social workers jumping into the fray and getting jobs and helping people with this particular issue. So I would say that in social sciences, what we do is we study people, we study them with different methods, scientific methods, that's why we're called a social science, even though we study something that is not, um, we, we tend to think of studying people as something very messy, right? Studying cultural people and social processes is messy, but we do it with a scientific method and uh, we apply our findings uh, to actually help people. So I think that our students, students who study in the social sciences, all want to very much uh, be in, in the middle of things and help people out and make a difference in people's lives. They all share that. And, and just kind of to reiterate, so those disciplines in the social sciences, anthropology, economics, education, History, uh, history, sociology, history. social work, psychology, criminal justice. It's a wide range of disciplines that, that, that somebody could study there. Now, people take those classes. Those all are going to transfer to a four-year school? Yes, absolutely. Most of our classes, many, many, I would say, if not most, are, are gen ed requirements. So they transfer as, transfer as such to four-year institutions. And many of our professors, uh, they kind of rotate, they take turns and they um, volunteer their time as panelists in the Illinois Articulation Initiative, which is the institution across the state that supervises or oversees uh, these transfer agreements. And uh, our classes uh, have a code or a number that tells four-year schools that our class has to transfer to them across the state of Illinois. And in my experience, we've had great experiences um, uh, where students have transferred our courses across the nation mm -hmm. to many different schools. Right, and, and that's true, not just in the social sciences, and across all of these disciplines, almost all of our classes uh, have these codes that let them transfer uh, seamlessly to, uh, to the four-year institutions in, in the state. And, uh, and to brag just a little bit again, one of the things we've found over time is that the students who start at Parkland, when they do transfer to a four-year institution, they perform better than the students who started at that institution as freshmen. 
and we like to think it's because of our outstanding faculty and our small I've found that offices. fairly consistently with my former students who've gone on to four years. Yep, it's true. I'm very, very proud of, of that. Yeah, uh, and all the props yes. go to the faculty. We got an outstanding Absolutely. group of uh, educators here at Parkland. We have people yes. very much dedicated. To really prepare to those students very well. And, uh, and small class sizes, a lot of personal attention. Um, student that comes to Parkland is not gonna get lost in the shuffle. And uh, we're, we, we, we take that very, very seriously. Julie, I think we have another question that's come in specifically about theater. If you'd like to uh, take a shot at this, uh, can you see the question or should I read it to you? Um, let me see. Well, how, how has the theater program changed during the pandemic and will there still be performances and chances for hands-on experience? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So while we are in this pandemic um, time, we, we certainly have had to make some adjustments, but there are a lot of things that uh, can be done online. So things are, are being done. We have some very creative faculty that are doing all kinds of wonderful things virtually. And then we also have our lab. Um, we've been able, because of, uh, you know, we're in phase four and that kind of thing, to do some hands-on in small groups, you know, properly masked with social distancing, uh, to, to do some of our production lab work. And so students have continued to have the experience of putting on a production, of uh, acting, of building and uh, the whole production process uh, continues uh, in, in a more limited and certainly not with um, audience members per se, but uh, in, in these lab situations. So we're, we're very grateful for that. And, and it's been a great experience for our students. Great, thank you. Well, um, in closing, you know, I, I think uh, I'd like to say one, one of the things I want to leave people with is the, the people that are on the screen here now uh, that we've been talking with are, are just the tip of the iceberg. We have such an outstanding faculty here um, and we're all really happy and proud to work at Parkland because we get to work with such great people um, dedicated to teaching, uh, people who really love teaching and we get to work with students. And uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't remember the last time I thought I had to go to work and it was work, you know. We get to do really great stuff because of the people we work with, both as, uh, as colleagues and because of the students we get to encounter every day. So we hope we get to see um, any of you who are watching uh, in our classroom soon. And I wanna thank everybody for participating in, uh, in the chat and anybody has any questions, uh, we're gonna throw it back to Mary Kay uh, in, uh, in just a second here. Uh, we can uh, answer questions as they come along uh, either now or later. So, yeah, thanks, I'm probably, everybody. I'm probably going to read. Uh, thank you, guys. I, it was awesome. I, uh, I learned so much even just sitting here listening to it. Um, I just want to let you know if you have questions for us that you can always send uh, things to admissions at parkland.edu. Uh, we will kind of send those through to the faculty if, if we can't answer them. So admissions at parkland.edu is a great way to reach us. Uh, uh, so uh, send your questions. Uh, let us know how we can help you uh, get started and and we're here for you okay. thank you thanks everybody have a good day now